Hello everyone, I'm the Enforcer and welcome to the breaking news. Today's breaking news is that Iranian forces are going to be firing off ballistic missiles and Shahed-136 drones towards the territory of the state of Israel within the next 12 to 14 hours, according to reports that are coming out from U.S. intelligence and security services. According to Global Military Info, Iranian strikes against Israel appear to be imminent, according to U.S. officials reporting this to Bloomberg. The attacks are expected to be a major missile or drone strike by Iran or its proxies. We understand that this is going to be happening incredibly soon at this point, and now the telltale signs show that apparently this risk is being taken as a imminent threat is incredibly high as many airlines have started to cancel their flights into the entire region of the Middle East, especially Israel. Some flights are also being canceled to Tehran for the next 24 hours, effective at this moment, once again showing that those airlines have now been tipped off and gotten information that apparently an Israeli airstrike or an Israeli retaliatory strike is imminent after the initial strike by Iran, and that this is certainly going to be something that does happen at this point. We've also been getting reports uh, that foreign contingencies within the state of Israel are now preparing to uh, make makeshift scenario situations or more so backup plans uh reality as we hear that they're starting to make contingency plans for evacuations uh amidst uh, requests from israeli authorities and emergency supplies like generators and satellite phones are now being brought into these foreign diplomatic missions these two facts from inside of israel and also from uh the airline situation in the middle east going to israel and iran are showing that Everyone is quite clear on the higher levels that this attack will be happening today. A lot of precautions are being made, which we have not seen in prior days, even during the original timetable where they said that the Iranian strike was going to be happening before April 9th. We never even saw this kind of level of preparation then. This is starting to show us that the situation is going to get out of hand incredibly soon, and we are believing that this will most likely be the series of events that will happen. A Iranian missile or drone strike or an attack will occur from Iranian territory or from Hezbollah and Hamas, one or the other, or it may occur from all three at the same time, targeting to, um, sit, uh, military installations inside of Israel. We understand they're most likely going to avoid civilian targets because this is an attempt to try and uh, remove the Israeli military from the situation in a one-and-go attack. It most likely will not happen in that way. The Israeli air defense will most likely shoot down and intercept most, if not all, incoming air targets that are heading into Israel, and then we'll see that the Israeli Air Force will most likely start to conduct large bombing operations against Hezbollah inside of Lebanon, Hamas inside of the Gaza Strip in the West Bank, and then the Iranian forces inside of the Islamic Republic of Iran. We may also see the Israeli Air Force target and destroy Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps camps that are inside of Syria and Iraq. Although we do not know about that at the moment, but we do certainly know that the Israelis are going to be responding to any group that attacks them. And if the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is in that group, then they will also become a target themselves. We've been able to hear these statements from the Israeli government quite clearly today, that if any provocative or warlike actions are taken by the Iranians, the Israelis are going to respond in full and immediately start to conduct uh, retaliatory strikes against Iran directly and also against us proxies within the region. We also understand that the Houthis may be involved in this uh, upcoming attack, as usually the Houthis are firing um, short or intermediate range ballistic missiles from their territory towards to the territory of Israel, so they may also be involved as well, and the Israelis may also conduct air campaigns against the uh, Houthis inside of Houthi-controlled Yemen. At the exact same time, outside of Iran, we've also been able to hear that major fires have been breaking out in large Russian cities, including the city of Kazan, which we can see right here. Unfortunately, we do not know what this fire is, but it's a very thick black smoke, which is leading us to believe that it is some kind of a fuel or some kind of a some kind of a large building that is caught on fire. We can see the Russian firefighters putting out the blaze right here. the clip ends sadly we don't get a lot of information about what the building is or what was inside the building that led to this fire but nevertheless another fire is broken out in, Ka uh, in kazan in russia and has apparently started to burn awry and burn the building completely to the ground that we saw in the clip meanwhile inside of moscow we saw a large commie block catch on fire on the outskirts of the city and we can see the fire spreading across the entire rooftop in this video Пока ни одной пожарной нет рядом.
That's the end of that clip, but we're once again starting to see that a large amount of fires are breaking out throughout the Russian Federation. We're not entirely sure if these are partisan attacks, or whether these are just accidental fires that are being set throughout the country, but nevertheless, it appears to be continuing on at a pretty high rate. We've also been able to hear that within the area of southern Russia, to the area of Orsk and Orenburg, that in apparently 600,000 Russians are in a flood zone area at the moment, and it's one of the largest humanitarian crises that we've seen inside the Russian Federation within recent times. It in fact beats out the amount of affected peoples that were affected from the Novokokovka dam explosion that occurred in early 2023. This is once again leading us to see that apparently you reap what you sow as far as the Russians go, and it looks like they're not going to be doing all too well going on into the future. They now have to try and evacuate 550 to 600,000 people out of this massive floodplain that exists within this area of Russia, and we've also seen that it's ended up sweeping away uh, some floating pontoon bridges. We've also seen uh, that apparently it has flooded some military air bases, although the Russians are trying to criminally underplay the damage that has been caused in, the, in this region. We understand that the entire area is now a massive floodplain, and it goes about as far north as to the area of Achio uh, Risko, which is an incredibly far northern area of Orenburg, about 40 miles away. So we know that the floodplain exists all the way from Orest to Orenburg, almost 40 miles uh, north and south of the Ural River, which travels along this green area here that you see on the map in between Orenburg and Orsk. But moving on from that little bit of news about the major floodplains and what's going on there, we've also been able to get uh, some very good news today from the area of Western Crimea that a Komarov or Ka-27 helicopter was apparently shot down by Ukrainian fire. This was also accompanied by a second helicopter crash in the form of an MI-24. Sadly, I do not believe that we were able to get the exact variant of the MI-24. The one pictured here is an MI-24P, but we're not really sure if it was an MI-24P, if it was an MI-24V, an MI-24C, uh, uh, MI-24A. Those are usually retired. It would be highly unlikely that the Russians have an MI-24A. But sadly, we don't know what exact variant of the MI-24 was shot down. We just know that one apparently crashed off the western coast of Crimea, and the three crew members that were on board the helicopter have now since died of course suddenly in the crash as one usually does in, in aircraft crashes but beyond that however it is incredibly interesting here that another Russian helicopter has crashed in the region along with a KA-27 that was shot down in northwestern Crimea it is once again showing that the Russian helicopter forces are starting to take on a high attritional rate and that they're starting to lose so many helicopters they may not be able to replace them in the amount of time that they usually have provided to them, which is an incredibly small amount of time, also due to the amount of losses. Given that, we may start to see once again that the Russian helicopter forces start to greatly reduce their activities within Ukraine for a set period of time, probably several months, so that way they can try and mitigate helicopter losses during that time and bring in more helicopters into the war. The Russians do have a limited ability at the moment to produce helicopters, although that ability to produce is incredibly slim. It's several helicopters a month, so as long as the Russians are able to keep their losses lower than several helicopters a month, they are actually breaking even most times throughout the war. But at the moment, they probably will have to sit back and wait at least a month to try and get two replacement helicopters to bring forward into the Russian armed forces to replace these helicopters that were lost today. But... With that, that is all of the major breaking news that we have today. I got to thank everyone so much once again for watching. If you all have enjoyed, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support us on Patreon down in the link in the description below. It really helps us out when people uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and also support the channel, um, especially through Patreon. And I got to give a huge shout out and a thanks to all of our patrons who are currently on Patreon, who have been enjoying this uh, these videos and enjoying our live streams for well over two years at this point. Um, if you also would like, you can watch our nightly live streams, which come on at 10 p.m. Eastern Time every single night, except for Mondays, every single day, covering every single bit of news that we were able to get on the war in Ukraine in picture and video evidence. But I thank you all so much once again for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.